just Backseat driver, she's back to the driver. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're uh, I need to turn myself on. Today we're concluding the series I've been doing on Christmas, and we're going to be talking about wise men, and that's why I'm up here, right? Oh. And wise and humble at the same time. Yeah. It, it, it's you know, if I'm talking about wisdom just for a minute, uh, I'm still seeking it. But the, um, it's amazing because I'm starting to see people in our congregation demonstrating wisdom. I'm like, oh my gosh, God is working in your life. Because, you know, it just, little things that are, are coming up, and I'm like, wow, that was really, that was really good that you brought that up. So anyway, it, God says, if you want wisdom, what do you do? Ask, Ask and you shall receive. Praise God for that. So where is the one that's been born, the king of the Jews? Was the question the wise men asked. We're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 10 this morning. And it begins with, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. The star that they had seen arose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Let us pray, Lord. We're thankful for the word this morning. We thank you for the birth of Jesus as we celebrate today. I couldn't imagine a life without Jesus. So thank you, Lord, for the gift, the ultimate gift that we could ever receive, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, I said that, now I ask, what do you want for Christmas? Kathy is my two front teeth. No. <laughs> Anybody remember that song? All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want for Christmas? And, you know, I used to get really caught up in this. And I started realizing it's very selfish. It's very selfish what I want for Christmas, you know? And then we see the commercial of uh, the wife buys her husband's brand new GMC pickup, and I say, yes, that's what I want. <laughs> but, yeah, and, but I don't know if, if, if I'm getting just older, if I'm getting wiser, or, or what it is, but the material things don't mean so much anymore. Is it? It's a joy of having Jesus in my life. It's a joy... I just, uh, I, I was sharing this morning, I called my sister yesterday and talked to her. It's been over six months. Anyway, she's up in Seattle. I was just talking and, and then I was talking to her husband and he goes, well, how's, you know, how's things going? How's the church going? I said, you know, there's absolutely nothing I'd rather be doing than what I'm doing right now. There's no place I'd rather be living. There's no job I'd rather be doing. He said, yeah, that's because you're in the ministry, you're doing God's work. I said, yeah, I'm sure that's part of it. <laughs> but um, it is nothing. I mean, I've got more fulfilled, more joy in my life now than I ever have, ever had in my life. And so when I talk about what I want for Christmas, I already got it. I already have it. And not only do I have a 
uh, a nice home to live in and a wonderful wife to share it with and a ministry that I love. But there's nothing else to really want. And then Jesus and the gift of Jesus in my life. So, who were these wise men? You know, there we all think we know because of what we've been told, but there's really not that much written about. Really not that much. We know, as I talked last week about the shepherds, these were local, uneducated Jews. 